So we are here to do another segment on our Stop the Insanity series, and this one is knits. knits. We've been working for, with knits for the last few weeks. Before that, we worked with the wovens on a camp shirt and how to make those simple changes um, to make your pattern different but still fit because you already did all the work to make it fit. So if you're new to um, Tuesdays at 2, what Jessica's talking about is a series we started um, a couple months ago, and it's called Stop the Insanity, and it's all about we, get, we, we want you to get a pattern fitted properly, but then once you get that pattern fit properly and you make one or two, maybe even three of the same garment, well, then you're ready for a new style or uh, some additions. And what we're trying to help you see is that same pattern can morph into many different things without having to buy a new pattern or do the new fitting. So we're trying to get you inspired to understand that you have a good t-shirt pattern. You can make a lot of things out of that t-shirt yeah. pattern once you have it fitted. And then you know you make a dress out of your t-shirt pattern you know it's going to fit you yes and so it's a lot more fun than going to buy a new pattern and hoping and praying and crossing your fingers and everything that it's going to fit and hang yes. right and some of the changes are just so much easier than you expect them mm -hmm. to be or maybe you're like can i just do this but you're too afraid to and we're giving you the permission or maybe you've tried and it didn't work out and you didn't know why right so that's what we're here for is to give you the right roadmap to get to those changes and sandy says that the series is life-changing for sewing wow <laughs> sandy i'm so glad I know Sandy was working with her daughters and her daughters wanted some tiered dresses i hope that went well um, and that can be done in the knit quite easily. Sorry, I don't, oh, I got it, okay. <laughs> Something popped up and I couldn't see any comments and I'm like, what is this, it was like news. I'm like, I don't, I, I've got enough of the news for today. At least for Tuesdays at two, I don't need to be. Yeah, I know. Reading the news. And it was saying it's hot. Yes, I know it's hot. It's very hot. 92. Yeah. 92 and no clouds. All right. So in the knit series so far, we have done a few different things. What have we done? We have talked about necklines. Yes, changing the neckline. We did a series on that. And or an episode. Sleeves or lack of sleeves. No, we didn't do that. We mm -hmm. did that for the woven. Oof, the heat's getting to me. So, so far we've changed the neckline. And then what did we do last week? Swing. Swing, that's swing. right. Swing. So I want to make a point on the swing that... Particularly if you are shorter like myself, don't have your swing start at the bus point. Have it start below the bus point. Otherwise, the whole thing starts to go straight out away from the body. So you want that swing to start lower than your bust line. Um, and you might want to do a couple of, you know, do a muslin to see if it's hanging right. Um, you don't want it to look like a maternity top. That's the whole thing. And in some cases, if you're doing a dress instead of a swing top, you can start even lower with the swing and not split it m maybe halfway between the bust line and the waistline to get the right swing. And I was going to do a copy of a dress I saw and I forgot to print that out. Sorry, <laughs> but um, we're getting a lot of our inspiration from online um, boutiques, uh, catalogs, some of the, um, well, anything from the really inexpensive in Amazon all the way up to the high-end mm -hmm. uh, $300 t-shirts. 
So you can get inspiration from all directions. Yeah. So essentially, you can make a better garment than the Amazon. The Amazon, and a just as good but cheaper version of the high end. Exactly. And of course, I mean, maybe not everyone's as picky as me, but you go through like I'll find something that I like, and you go through, and it's like, but I don't like any of those patterns, like the. Print, well, the, the, the print, print I yes, should say, not yes. patterns. In you this. might like the silhouette, yeah, but you but don't, I like, don't the... like that. I don't like that print. I don't like that. Maybe the net, nah, I don't like that one. And now you pick your own, mm -hmm. make your changes. I think that's what um, the hobby of sewing is all about. It's a release. It's a relaxing thing. It's a creative process. It brings a lot of people uh, joy and comfort to be creative. But at the same time, you can have the silhouette in the color and the print that you find that you like the best as opposed to walking the mall or shopping for hours to find just one piece of clothing that is satisfying. So, um, yeah, so I think that's one of the reasons we like to sew is that we can have what we want and how we want it. And of course, fit is important, and you can't get fit in ready to wear. You just settle. We talked about that a couple weeks ago about how we all have those points where we settle. And it um, could be that the crotch is too long, so you fold the waistband over. I mean, I've done that plenty of times. Uh, it, it doesn't hang quite right in the shoulders because one of your shoulders is a little different, but no one will notice. So you put up with it, and you put up with it. And that's okay. But custom fit is so much nicer. So that's enough about that. Okay, so before we go into our demos for this week, Jennifer has a question about the swing from okay. last week. When you do the back of your swing tee, do you start at the same point in the side seam as the front? I was confused because there is no bust point in the back. Yes, I start at approximately the same point. You want to be very similar because it's going to change the whole uh, garment. So you don't want the back to have less swing or start in a different place. It will not hang properly. So yeah, you want to start in, uh, you want to split it up. You know, where you split it up to gets very little extra and it's the further down it gets that gets more fabric. But again, if you start right at the bust point, then you're gonna have like this little V uh, triangle that comes out the fabric will form and you probably don't want that. What? Before we move over, I feel the need to like let them know that while it is 92 or 94 degrees here, Janet, and mine is not as bad. Did, we do not yeah. have frostbite as we were on this side. Well, you're gonna do your demos. We did some tie-dyeing with the kids this weekend, and we were washing them out. So we're today. a little so blue in the They're fingers. a little, little blue. We're not uh, gross or have frostbite on our hands, but Janet's about to do that demo, and I know <laughs> someone's going to be like, what happened to your hands? You remember back in the day when you were a kid and I was first starting to dye, and we would go... I would sometimes dye my hands bright. One whole hand would be bright turquoise. And Gloves were just not an option. Yeah, we'd go to church or something, and I'd forget about it, and all of a sudden, of course, you talk with your hands sometimes, and I'd go like this, and the person I'm talking to would go, <gasps> Yeah, it's like magenta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's why we have blue hands. We're not Smurfs. I know. I just see you going like this. I'm like, I wonder if that's showing up on camera, but then I realize you're going to go to a demo. Um, so sorry, I had to add that. Um, for us, I don't know if you're going to address this today, but I'm going to throw it out there before I forget. Karen is asking for a straight t-shirt dress. Do I add to the bottom of the t-shirt pattern or lengthen at a specific point? My T fits over the bust, waist, and hip, but I don't want it to slope too far forward or back. Okay. We're going to, I'm going to talk about that. Oh, okay. All right, well, she's going to talk about that, Karen, and if your specific question doesn't get answered, just, you know, throw it out there yeah. again. Yep. Um, or if you want you want to refine it after I talk, just throw it, you know, throw yeah. it out there. Okay, before we move over there, um, we didn't add yet. If you've seen the newsletter, you know that we're having another sale this week, 
and it's for all books, DVDs, and USBs. So if you're switching over, the DVDs and the USBs are the same content, but if you're switching over, I know they're not really making computers with the DVD players anymore. So if we you, highly we recommend So the just USBs. so you know, that's like the same content. But books, DVDs, USBs are 20% off with the code 20OFF. 20OFF, and I'll put it in the comments. Yeah, and if you're having fun with this series and you think you'd like to go a little bit further, then the um, Pattern Making Made Easy book would be a great one to pick up at the 20% off. And I refer to that a lot, and we use it here a lot. And I know some of you have gotten it, and it is a mammoth textbook, and there's lots of stuff in there that you may never use. You may never want a leg of mutton sleeve, or you may never want, you know, uh, a pleated pant, but it's all in there. So you can go through and find the technique and um, use that technique to make the changes or to create a pattern even. That's what it's for, is to create a pattern. What I've been using it for in this series is just to make the changes. Um, okay, Pam has a question. I believe this is about the swing tee. I didn't finish it yet. Um, that do, Pam Clark? Pam, Pam. Okay. Do you see any problems with starting the flare on the bus point on the front and the back versus the back at a different point? Must you add the same amount on each, the front and the back? No, you don't, there's no must about anything. But if you have an idea, try it in a muslin. So in an inexpensive knit or whatever. But again, don't start right at the bus point. Come down a little bit from the bus point. What I did with the ones I showed you last week, I started them in the same place uh, laterally in the front and the back to create a balance and that's what you want is a balance I don't think you want less swing in the back than the front you may want a lot less swing than I put in mine so I put six inches in the front of mine and six inches in the back you may want only four or three inches swing so that can make a difference too but I would do them equally uh, I I've never tried it unevenly, but I, I just think equally makes more sense to me. All right. As you never know, do that muslin. See what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You may, you know, have a whole different style. And, you know, each of us has, we've talked about this so many times in fitting. We all have different body types. And so different configurations might work on one person's body type that isn't even going to come close to working on others. And again, another reason to sew for ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can fit our bodies and get the right contour and proportions. All right. So you have a couple of demonstrations for us today. And I know one that Sandy has asked about a couple times. Okay. And we're going to get to is turning the t-shirt into a nightgown. Okay. So let's start with the nightgown, and I'll, I'll bring it with me over here for the demo. But this is my nightgown. Okay, so this is the nightgown I made. I made it out of that I don't know, was it 7.4 ounce uh, bamboo knits that we were carrying? We have one, two, three, four uh, prints left in that. Uh, it was a limited edition buy. Um, but anyway, uh, here it is. It's got the kimono sleeve. I did a little band, not a cuff. This is real fast and easy. And I like, when I make a nightgown, 
I want to just relax about it. It's nothing that the whole world is going to see. It doesn't need to be extra fancy or couture. I just want to be able to sew it up real quick. And usually I end up wearing them for several years. They last a long time. But anyway, this was made for my t-shirt pattern. So I'm going to show you now how I did this from the t-shirt pattern. And it is extremely simple. And again, you could change the neckline. I did not change the neckline. And when I got done, I made this band so narrow, and you see I've got a wider cuff here. It kind of looked funny to me that the, so I added this little piece in here to get, to bring a little more of the black and white polka dot uh, to the eye. But it's not necessary, it's just something I did. All right, so you're gonna start with your t-shirt pattern. So here's the t-shirt pattern that fits me and you're going to trace it out but all you want to do is trace out uh, let's say the neckline and of course the fold line and um, you'll see remember in the woven when we wanted to do the kimono sleeve we went from the shoulder point and raised this up about a half an inch here. So I made that mark and then starting here at the neckline, I drew that straight out from there. So we're not going to maintain the same angle of the shoulder seam. We've got to make this looser so that it drapes and it's comfortable. It's not binding. So we've got to do this. All right. Then, over here, I maintained the width at the bust, okay? So this is where I want to make sure it fits me in the bust, but it's not too baggy. Then I just sort of went pretty much straight down here. I didn't uh, want it to come in. I don't need it to contour. It's something I want to sleep in, so I don't, I want it a little bit loose. All right. So then, using that same... In the, the, in the book, it would tell us to come down and swing this out, and it would be much wider for their kimono sleeve, but I didn't like the looks of that, so I just came in and made a bit of a curve uh, for my um, arm side, and I think I know what this is, but I'm going to measure it. Um, so my sleeve is eight and a half so this is eight and a half and then you could curve it in okay so that's approximate that's a good distance so you might want to take that as your first step and then see how it works for you and of course I lengthened it so you can see I lengthened it it's got pretty much the same hemline except for it's wider at the bottom so there you go with the front then with the back and again you could change this neckline and you if you changed your necklines on uh, a couple weeks ago when we were doing that you could still play with the neckline here and have different necklines and then for the back it's the same thing exactly the same thing we brought that up then remember we always have to balance the side seam and if you ever purchase a pattern where the side seams aren't balanced that's not a good pattern with one exception and that would be if it was um, like an Izzy Miyake uh, or one of the real artsy things sometimes they will purposely create a different angle for the back side seam than the front in order to add fullness in the back so it'll puff out in the back. Uh, so there's sometimes, but most of the time you don't want that. So then we wanna make sure we're gonna put these on top of each other and what's really important is that everything be the same on the side here. That's not always the case with a set-in sleeve pattern, but with a kimono sleeve they're going to be identical or extremely similar here of course we want this to be the same and we and of course we've kept it very similar to 
our original t-shirt, which we made sure was falling straight on the sides under the arm. So we know this is going to hang right. And then, then you just whip it up. Oh, we have a question? Yes. Sandy is asking about the type of sleeve you're saying. It's a kimono sleeve. She's asking, is this type um, like a dolman sleeve? Well, a dolman sleeve would come down around the waist, maybe a couple inches above the waist, and then swing out. So there'd be a bunch of fabric in here for a dolman. And then continue out. This uh, is what a drafter would call the kimono. Okay, so there, it's, there's no, it's not set in. And then um, I added a little band. And here's how I, you could make a pattern piece. But for me, when it's a rectangle or a square, I'm going to use a gridded ruler to cut it out. So I don't want a pattern piece. They end up getting distorted when you're cutting anyway. So I always use a ruler. So here I've said, cut your band at two, two and three fourths inch wide by 16 and a quarter. That's because I know the finished uh, circumference of this, plus I added a seam allowance so that when I made that band and sewed it on, it will fit right in here. So you'll measure what the distance will be after the two seam allowances are made so there's three eighths here and three eighths here so i've got to subtract that then i'm going to add to the band that half inch seam allowance so i can make a quarter inch seam and then the band will fit perfectly in there i put it on at a quarter inch seam allowance and surged it so you can see that that is surged And it just lays nice and flat and then I top stitch the seam allowance down just like we do around the neck so that it'll stay there it's not gonna flop around it's a nightgown I don't want to iron it I don't want that seam uh, buggering up so stitch it down I think that's the fussiest amount of work you're gonna have to do you do the hem the same way you do the t-shirt with the double uh, double-sided uh, I don't know why I can't think of the word right now, but anyway. Fusible. So, hmm? Fusible? Yes. So that's my version of the nightgown. I want it big enough so that when I'm rolling around in bed, it isn't restricting me or getting caught up. So think of that if you're making a nightgown. But you can take this right into a dress. You might be a little uh, fussier. Make a nightgown first if you want. Those of you who are talking about making a straight tee dress, make a nightgown first. And as you're working it, then you'll know, make your nightgown your muslin for your t-shirt dress. Then you'll know the shape you want. But yes, you still want it to hang straight down the side. You can flare it a little bit. But if you want a lot of extra down here, you're going to want to split it again because remember what we talked about if you flare this side seam way out it's not going to hang straight it's going to pitch so a little bit you can get away with otherwise you want to create that fullness with your uh slash and spread and then sandy's wondering how you did the insert you know sandy it was an afterthought so i just cut it and put it in there and stitched it down to the um down to, to, the neck band. to the seam allowance here so it's you basically just cut out kind of like a tail yeah fold it in half and put it on there i retrofit it when i, I do a lot of retrofitting especially when i'm making a prototype so what that means is i sit down at the sewing machine and kind of figure out what's going to fit and make it happen and then afterwards if I want to reproduce it I can make the pattern then so that happens a lot in what's called workrooms workrooms for a designer is where they're doing the samples the prototypes and the patterns
Oh. Okay. Uh, yes. There we go. She caught up there. All right. So again, this was a little bit heavier, but I've made them out of the straight uh, bamboo rayons that we have in the solid colors. Uh, I think we have one print left in that as well. Uh, that cherry would be great for a little nightgown. Um, but just about any knit will work. The ITYs would work as well. As a matter of fact, I have an ITY um, nightgown that I really like. It's about four or five years old when we did the first Easy T video or first Easy T pattern. I made it then. Okay, so any other questions on the straight t-shirt dress or the nightgown or making the pattern? All right, so I'm gonna slide this out. Can you bring me that dress? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's a little clumsy. All right, so this is an ITY, but again, you could do this out of any of the your favorite knits. I'm gonna turn it this way. And this one has pockets. So I put the pockets in the side and I started with the t-shirt pattern. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. Well, actually, I think I started with the nightgown pattern because I'd already uh, brought that shoulder out and everything. So I started with the nightgown pattern. And let's see, oh yeah. Now, here's what I found when I did the nightgown pattern. Pull these out of the way. Can you see what I'm doing here? Not yet. Okay. All right, so this is the nightgown pattern. This is the bodice for the dress I have here. So at first, I just brought it right down the same way as the nightgown, and I think I cut it a little too long. So. I um, was guessing, which is what you have to do sometimes. And when I tried it on, basted it up, it was too long in the, I don't want it to the waist. My waist is not the smallest part of my body right now. So I don't want that elastic there. I want it slightly above the waist. So I got it shorter, but then I also realized I needed to take some of this out of here too. It was too big under there. So you kind of, for that dress, I felt like it needed to nip in a little bit and to have a more flattering bust line. But, um, so we use the same thing, but in this one, I put the same band width on here as I used for the neckline. I did the exact same thing, just a little band. I didn't want anything really fancy or contrasting. This is a busy print. And so I just put that little band on. I did it the same way as the nightgown, although it doesn't look anything like the nightgown, which is kind of cool. And then I added a pocket. And I added a pocket from another pattern. I mean, we've all made these pockets dozens of times. You don't need to draw one or draft one. Just go find a pattern uh, of a pant or a skirt or a jacket that has one of these pockets in it. I kind of put it on and decided where it would be best for my arm length. Now, some people have shorter or longer arms, and sometimes the pockets, if you ever put your hands in a garment where the pocket was too low, and you keep going, and the, and the garment keeps moving, you can't quite ever reach the bottom of the <laughs> pocket. So, um, if you're custom making it, make sure you do that uh, for yourself as well. So it was just that simple. And again, this is the ITY. It'll be really great vacation resort dress because I can roll it up, wad it up even in the suitcase. You hang it up and there's virtually no wrinkles. And even if there was a severe one, it'll fall out in uh, uh, overnight. So um, it's a great little, if you purchase this fabric, know that it has some raised areas on the print. So in here it's raised. 
and so that's a little uh, touchy with the iron so always when you're going across these areas make sure you use your pressing cloth or avoid them with the iron otherwise it's all good all and right. how'd you do that gather for the for the bottom part oh i used uh clear elastic so let me tell you how this all worked so and you can when you see all the notes I have here, and I keep scratching them out because I kept changing it. So I measured the width of the bottom of my finished bodice. And I decide, let me see where it is. It's 21 and a half inches wide. Or it's on the fold, so once it's opened up, it's 21 and a half inches wide. I didn't want to add a tremendous amount of gathering, which would be double that. So I only went half again as much. So, and I made my notes here. So for the skirt back, I'm cutting it at 31 and 3 fourths inch wide. So it's not double this. It's half again or somewhere as close to that. And then the length I wanted was 22, but that won't be of any use to anyone unless you're five foot one. And then you want to start somewhere in that area. And I left myself a note that that would be a one inch hem. So my finished length of my skirt, I know I want 21 inches. And if I do a one inch hem, that's what I'll get. And the front is exactly the same. So then I took those two skirt pieces and I quartered them. So along the top of that skirt, it was quartered. Then I took a piece of elastic the width of the bodice not the width of the skirt but the width of the bodice and i quartered that then i stretched it and stitched it down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance okay so i stretched it so those marks quarter marks matched with the elastic the elastic quarter marks matched the quarter marks on the top of the skirt i did that for the front and the back then you sew the uh, side seams together and then you sew the seam around here now what happens is it isn't perfect fit there's going to be still a little bit of slop or looseness in there but you still have the ability to stretch it where needed to get it to fit perfectly so i would not maybe not quarter but i'd half it so i made sure i stayed my skirt stayed centered with the center front centered with the center back and um, then if I needed to I just stretched it a little bit more to make it fit okay and then along those same lines um, Jennifer had asked can you flare out the bottom more and ruffle it yes yes you can and again a little flare on the side seam fine like a line but that's as far as you can go if you want more flare then you're going to slash and spread to get that flare but you can make it as big as you want you can make it full length we're going to show you some other examples where you could tear the skirt and there's just so many options but if you do like we do and go online to some of these boutiques and some of them are probably out of your price range there's certainly more than i want to spend but i like their ideas i would rather in most cases copy a 300 dollars dress than a 29 dollars dress and there's plenty of those on amazon um, they look cute in the picture but when you get them you find out why they were 29 dollars so um so that's what uh, i like to do and i was telling brenda that as long as I've had Facebook, it continues to evolve into something else. And now my Facebook feed for my personal feed has evolved into artistic and boutique garments. Because once you look at one, your name goes out there and pretty soon your news feed, you're getting two or three more. And I'm discovering all kinds of styles and new brands, um, having a ton of fun looking at them. But that's what my Facebook uh, personal Facebook feed has turned into is my shopping for boutique designs. Um, Mary has a question about the skirt and the elastic. 
When you sew the elastic to the skirt, is the skirt already sewn together at the side seams? No, I did them separately. I just felt it was more manageable, Mary, because that's a lot. And, you know, it's like, that would be like 68 inches across that you were trying to evenly get that elastic into. So I felt like it made more sense. And I also will tell you that at the side seam, when I get there, you know you got a, a seam allowance. Mine was 3 8 So that last little bit, I don't want that gathered or gathered very much. So I kind of avoid uh, that area when it comes to stretching the elastic so that you're not trying to sew a gathered seam together. That's the only drawback to doing it on the flat. Bernie says that she's always had trouble with the clear elastic. Do you have any tips? Well, what troubles are you having? I've never had any trouble with it, so I, I don't know what the trouble might be. Now, are you using clear elastic where did you purchase it? What is the thickness of it? Some are much thinner than others and some are much heavier. Maybe you're having a problem in that area. I use a quarter inch wide. So write me to uh, send us a note and tell me what the troubles are that you're having with it. And you have that on the website still? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, we have packages, I think they're seven yards in a package, and it's a quarter inch wide, and I'm trying to remember the thickness. Let me grab a packet and see if I have any. Yeah, it's... The thickness is 1.2 millimeters and it's a quarter inch wide. So that's what I use. Um, so maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's too narrow or too wide. I don't know. Help me out, Mary. <laughs> okay, she's a, it's Bernice. Oh, Bernice, sorry. <laughs> and she said, maybe that was it as they came apart at the stitches. I have not used the elastic that came with your kit. So it could be the quality of the elastic. Yeah, it has to be a good thickness because you're putting, you're perforating it. And if it was really thin, it would just uh, come apart because of the perforation. So it has to have a certain oomph Stability. to it. Stability. Mm -hmm. Claudia wants to know if the clear elastic kits can get too old to sew. I've not had that issue, but I haven't kept it real long either. So could elastic get brittle? Oh yes, elastic. Now I have had elastic, not clear elastic, but I had elastic when I was producing my line, which was back in the 80s. And I think we went into the early 90s. And then, I, so I had big, spools of elastic and I had this really nice no roll three quarter inch elastic and I forgot about it. it was on the shelf and everything and all one day I went to pull it out and use it and when I stretched it it didn't go back <laughs> it had lost all of its elasticity so it can get dried out with age so I would think the same thing would be true about the clear elastic so if it seems old, if it's yellowed, if it seems brittle at all, it's not an expensive thing to purchase. Just buy new. And yeah, uh, but it's not going to happen in a year. No, yeah. no, no, no. It would. I think mine was like fifteen years yeah. old or something. Okay, so a couple of good questions. Okay. About sewing on the elastic, two different people. Do you do you use a longer? Stitch length and do you straight or zigzag? I don't use a longer stitch length and I would only stitch it with straight. So few things in the garment industry and in the ready to wear industry are ever done with zigzag. It's a home sewing, it's a home sewing technique. Well, I guess. 
It's the same thing with the stretch stitch. When people ask me, do you do the stretch stitch? No. There's no need for it. I think it's a gimmick. And sometimes when they're telling you to use zigzags in different areas, I disagree. First of all, a zigzag goes back and forth. So your machine is not keeping you. It's harder to keep a nice straight line. And I simply don't think the zigzag is necessary. But if you did a did it, I'd do it really, really narrow one. You know, I wouldn't do a wide one or a real, uh, again, you don't want to perforate that elastic so that it'll pull apart. So you don't want to put too many stitches in one area. So just keep that in mind. All right, Sherry said she might have missed it, but she's looking for clarification on the skirt. Okay. Um, did you use or did you create? Oh, what skirt pattern did you use or did you create it from the bottom part of the length and t-shirt? Okay, so I'm going to go back to my pattern here and I put my notes. So I measured the width, the cut width of my front and back, which both were 21 and a half inches wide. So I wanted my skirt to have some fullness. So I half again added to this. So I added 10 and a quarter inches to this, which is almost half, okay? And ma that made it 31 and 3 fourths inch. So I cut my skirt panels three, 34, 31 and 3 fourths <laughs> inches wide by 22 inches long because I knew I basted my whole piece together, tried it on to make these determinations. So and it's just a rectangle. It's just two rectangles. That's all the skirt is, is two rectangles. Mm -hmm. And that's how I determined what they would be. If you want a lot of gathering, you might want to double it. Then your panels would be, in this case, 42 inches wide. So it's all about how much do you want. You always want, you usually want at least half again as much. So if it's 20, you want it 30. And Sandy is asking, how about an A-line skirt? If you wanted to add an A-line. You could, if you're, but if you're gathering it, the A-line is going to be negligible. But you could just add an A-line to the. If you wanted it just to be an A-line skirt, you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do just about anything at this point. The beauty is with this t-shirt concept with our Stop the Insanity, we know it's gonna fit in here. Down here is not so hard to fit because it's loose and it's gathered. So a little guesswork and a little trial and error, you can get this down in no time because we don't have to fool with any of this part. We know it fits. Yes, so just again, the clarification on the skirt, because it's easier than I think people were thinking it was. It's just rectangles. She did the width, like she explained, um, how she determined, and you can determine how much gathering or whatever that you want, and straight down, two Stri rectangles. Two straight rectangles, straight down, and I added a pocket. And to find out where I wanted my pockets, I had to, again, I basted mine together. Pretty much basted the whole thing. Well, the top I knew was gonna fit. So from here down, I basted everything together and put my hand in and made a mark where I, my hand stopped so I knew where my pocket should end up. Because we talked about you don't want the pocket too low because then you'll never be able to use it. <laughs> well, you can put stuff in, but you can't get it out. There you go. <laughs> You have to get a friend to help you. Oh. All right. Well, we have a few more examples. I'll come over there with you, Jess, and oh, okay. we'll show them some of the fun stuff I found online. Okay. Do we know who asked about the stripe? Did Brenda give us yeah. that? Pam Clark. Oh, that's right. Pam Clark sent in this picture. And she's curious as to how could she get that look. She liked the play with stripes. 
Oh my goodness, we should do a challenge sometime when I, I'll have to get striped fabric in here. But uh, playing with stripes can be so much fun. And this adds a really cool element without being anything special because the stripes are horizontal, then they're vertical, and then they're horizontal again. Okay, so Pam, all you have to do, you'll have to do a little test, is that sleeve length, just like I just showed you, that's what you're gonna wanna do, is raise it up and make it longer until it falls to such a point when you put the striped sleeve on. And all this is, is another band. It's not a sleeve, it doesn't have a sleeve cap. I will tell you a funny story in a minute about that. But, so this is just gonna be a wide band that's gonna get hemmed like a sleeve. So just play with it. If you don't have some stripes to play with, you got some cheap fabric and a, and a Sharpie, just make a couple of quick lines and when you feel like it's gonna hit right in the right place, that's where you're at. So my funny story is, you know how much I don't like poorly made patterns or people making patterns that have no expertise to do so. So, and this was for someone who was actually created a pattern for both. So I expected it to be a good pattern. And I knew the person, and I knew she wasn't a de designer by trade. But it was in Vogue, so I'm thinking it's good. Well, it had a sleeve that came at least this far down. I think it came down much further, uh, a, a, like a kimono. And then the sleeve to put in it had a sleeve cap in it. This picture keeps messing up. Sorry. Oh, the sleeve that she was going to attach to the straight across place had a sleeve cap in it. I just threw it away because there's no way. You don't need an arm sign at your elbow. <laughs> you, you don't have a shoulder there. The sleeve cap is for your shoulder. If you aren't putting it on the shoulder, you don't need it. So anyway, that's my story about someone who doesn't know anything about making patterns, but they thought they had a good idea. All right, so a couple of questions here. So Sandy's asking, so the type of sleeve in this striped one that Pam was asking about is a kimono sleeve? Yes. She says, boy, did I not understand what sleeves were called. <laughs> oh, and there's lots of them, and you know what? It's not your fault. I can't tell you how many garments I've seen recently that have said they called puff sleeves. Puff sleeves. Okay, a puff sleeve is one that's gathered. The whole arm side is gathered, and there's a ton of fabric right here. Okay, so it poofs out. The sleeves that they, I'm seeing in some of these boutiques when they call them puff sleeves is the sleeve puffs at the cuff, not at the shoulder. That's not a puff sleeve, it's just a full sleeve. So anyway, there's lots of contradictions in terminology. So uh, I just go by the old traditional and they're changing them and eventually, I guess some of my terms will be outdated. <laughs> it's fun with me. Jennifer says she, she's new at this. She prefaces her question. Uh -huh. Can you do a three-quarter sleeve with a com in a kimono? Well, you get down that far, you're going to need to add a piece. Otherwise, well, I have one on. Okay. So you see that it, it, it doesn't fall straight. It goes at an angle. So the further you go down, the more that angle is going to be. And it's not so pretty when it gets down there. So what you would do is add that tube and you can make a full length sleeve if you want. That's what this pattern was. It was a t-shirt pattern that I bought from Vogue and that's what it was supposed to do, but then it had a sleeve cap in it. I just can't imagine someone thought you need a sleeve cap on your elbow. Anyway, okay, is that it? So I have some yes. inspirations. So here is a very simple concept of what we just did in a much younger, cuter figures. And this would just be the basic knit. You could use our bamboo knits, our jersey knits, uh, solid or heathered. A great, this is a go-to dress. Uh, you throw that in your wardrobe 
Uh, you got that little black dress or that little white dress, and you can dress it up and dress it down, sandals, jewelry, whatever. So it's a great vacation wear. This is a, the same dress, but now it's in a print with a little different neckline, a little higher neckline. So you can kind of see, and these all have pockets, them, and that's, I put pocket in mine. Now those are inexpensive dresses that I wouldn't purchase because they're too inexpensive. I know what you're going to get. It's going to look real cute here, but when you get it, and we've all heard those stories of purchasing this really, what looked really great, and then you get it, it's not so great. But this one, I think it down I think this dress is somewhere around three hundred dollars and um, it's the it looks to be the kimono sleeve it looks to be exactly what I just did except for this sleeve I'm not sure if they've added a piece here or they just exaggerated the depth of it right but you can see here, it's the same neckline, everything that we're working with. But they tiered this one. And the beauty of this was, and this is something, that they had a border print. So they were able to really create some interest. You could do the same thing by combining prints. And someone called me the other day, or wrote, and said, well, how do you determine tiers? Well, generally, the tiers you could start with equal distance apart. So if you had 60 inches in length, you would make each one 20 inches long, okay? That would never work on me. <laughs> I'll be walking at it. But, or, but if you look at these boutiques, now this particular one is called Johnny Was. If you look at these boutiques and you go through, you're going to see inspiration. And you may see an inspiration that's three tiered and the first two are the same depth, but the third one is a smaller one that's gathered more to create like a little ruffle at the bottom. You could do that. You could have all three of them graduate down in size or graduate up in size. There's tons of things you can do, but sometimes we get a little nervous because in our mind's eye, it's not as clear and we're not quite sure, but if you look at it and you get to see a silhouette of what you want to do and then you can see the proportions, then you know you're good to go and now you know how to do it. Now, Sandy, so she made the top tier longer on one of her girls' dresses. She said she found the idea online. Mm -hmm. And that's something you can do too. Um, I know you already said it, but it's like if you make if you made the top, if it's a solid, and your first tier long and a solid, then you can do two, like right. kind of color block the tiers on you the bottom. You can color block so and you can, yeah, block the different prints. You could use the same print in three different colors. That would be fun. There's just so much you can do, but you gotta get out there and get inspired. And now that's what we're here for, is to give you the tools on how to make it happen. All right. Karen is asking for a sheep dress, no gathers. Do I just lengthen the original t-shirt bodice? Yes. I would do a muslin, but I don't know your body. Um, there's lots of different, things, shapes. different shapes and things that could happen. So do a muslin. Make sure it's not catching on your butt. That's where it catches or your hips. You know, you want to make sure you've got enough fabric to skim your body, um, most likely. Unless you're extremely well built, and then you might want it body hummed. Mm -hmm. So, up to you. All right. All right, so don't forget, especially if you're having fun with these pattern changes, that we have um, books on sale so this one would be great for making your own patterns or making your pattern changes um, we have dvds the islander dvds all well usbs we would recommend all about construction and the fast and easy and better construction that we teach so that's available um, and then we have connie's fitting dvds and those would be very helpful at this point too to help you uh, get 
that better fit. Did I miss anything? The code is 20-20-0-O-F-F. And you'll get 20% off, and the sale runs through Sunday, the I believe, 26th. at the 6th. Yes. So, and if you have any questions and that we didn't get to today or don't occur to you till later, please email us at islandersewing at comcast.net. And let your sewing friends and your sewing clubs or guilds or your online groups know about Islander Sewing Systems and Tuesdays at 2. And the fact that we have that wonderful playlist on YouTube now, it's a great resource for all sewers. So we hope you'll share us with your sewing friends. All right, so we will be back next week. On Tuesday. Um, yes. At 2. At 2. <laughs> Eastern time. Eastern time. <laughs> well, I think most people have that now, but it's always good to remind you. Oh, yes, and we always have new people pop in, so it's good to make sure they understand what we're up to. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at 2 here at Islander Sewing Systems. I'm Janet Prey, and this is Jessica Johnson. Thanks so much for joining us today.